So long, Manishma. Thank you guys so much for allowing me here today. Uh, I cannot tell you how excited I am to, to present, and I wish I was there in person, especially in one of my favorite countries on the entire planet. So we'll get started. Just sit there. Give me uh, Shmia one second. I want to make sure that this works. So I believe... Can you see me and my screen still? Yes, beautiful. Fantastic. I just want to check that the next slide, you can see the slide and myself, correct? We're good yes. to go? Yes. Wonderful. Hope everyone's doing well. It is 5 a.m. here in California, but I could not miss an opportunity to be here with you, uh, especially speaking among such illustrious other speakers. So again, thank you for the opportunity. I will make it as quick as I can. So. Bear with me if I'm speaking fast, but again, thank you, and uh, hope we can all learn something here today. Um, so this month is actually Lifespan.io's ninth birthday. I'm here on behalf of Lifespan.io. I'm going to tell you all about us and what we're here to do and what we've been doing and how you can engage in this amazing community even further and help us accelerate the progress. So this organization is a nonprofit. And it's based in the U.S., but we represent the entire field globally. And we focus on creating and leveraging strategic media initiatives that support the longevity biotech and rejuvenation science industry and movement. And today we're going to discuss some of the related challenges, strategies for improvement, and the importance of making our efforts more mainstream by increasing attention and funds for our collective cause. So our programs are designed to advocate for all the work being done by the researchers, the scientists, the startup founders, academic investors, all by amplifying narratives that are easy for the general lay public to digest and engage with. So our goal is to build and serve the longevity community for the purpose of accelerating progress. We promote the advancements of the biomedical technologies and aging research through sponsorship, democratization, funding enablement, responsible journalism, and media, awareness, and encouraged collaboration. So we started as a crowdfunding platform, helping the basic science get attention and funding. And then we expanded into longevity news and education using various media formats. And it's important to note that we've had a stringent code of ethics that our organization follows. So what we publish is objective, it's fact-based, it's not financially driven or influenced by government or commercial means. You won't see us promoting products. Over the last few years, we've been developing and leveraging various media platforms and crowdfunding infrastructure where we all we share all content and we engage the public. We have a podcast with monthly recaps of the news, animated videos that teach people the basics of the science and critical thinking about future tech, and so much more. And we target audiences with every level of knowledge to ensure that the information is evergreen and relevant. So media plays a critical role in changing mindsets, behavior, increasing awareness, and making important causes mainstream. Coca-Cola, for example, will pay up over a billion dollars just a year on advertising alone, basic advertising. How much money is being spent on selling or advocating the idea that longevity science isn't science fiction, that it's something to pay more attention to, to put more money in for further research? We clearly know here that it's not enough. So the question then is, how do we change this? A critical seed that I want to plant here today is the importance of effective narratives. Understanding your audiences, whether they're customers, investors, pharma partners, even your family members, is required to successfully pitch a business idea or belief model or convey the significance of a cause. So thoughtful and simplified narratives are absolutely key and one of the biggest hurdles that our community experiences today. Currently, there are two main paths to success. One is a massive scientific breakthrough, which will speak for itself, or the second path is more attention and funding to fuel and enable further research and development. The latter requires challenging biases and misconceptions on behalf of the general public, the politicians, the regulatory bodies, and the investors who are not yet aligned or educated about the incredible possibilities that will surface as we learn more about aging and age-related diseases. So Lifespan.io is determined to pave the way for emerging biomedical tech to be accepted and adopted by mainstream audiences. 
We will articulate the value of this industry for the sake of your future clients, your patients, products and end users and funders. So we're thinking about your target audiences, confronting this misinformation, actively reducing skepticism and educating with digestible and engaging content and encouraging enthusiasm about less suffering and longer, healthier lives. These advocacy efforts are driving the development and expansion of our entire market and movement. Okay, so now let's walk through the how. How do we do this? This virtuous cycle illustrates an important process for effective advocacy. What you see here on the screen first, we're going to identify the important research and put a spotlight on it. Then the community will share updates on their work with us. Then our teams of journalists, writers, video producers simplify the complex science and present the new content in a way that will actually educate, entertain, and excite the public. Our marketing and social media teams then amplify this information to the masses through our various media hubs and platforms. These activities enable funding opportunities, which are then used to drive further research and create critical readiness for institutional investment or additional Web3 and blockchain-related decentralized support. This continuous cycle ensures that scientific initiatives do not funnel to a point of obscure research that nobody knows about. Community building also helps facilitate better collaboration and it deduplicates efforts. One of the reasons that I personally joined the space was because our industry and community is uniquely altruistic. The goal is to raise all boats. A single success benefits everybody and it's a healthy incentive structure. However, there are challenges that we will all need to address together. I'm going to explain two fundamental challenges we're collectively facing that are drastically hindering progress. We must make the field more accessible to funding opportunities. We also need to generate more public awareness and support. Aging is an extremely complicated science, and to drive public interest, it needs to be translated into digestible, relatable narratives that everyone can understand and easily get behind. So regarding government funding, let's look at the U.S. just for a moment. According to estimates, aging causes 85% of deaths, but only receives 8.5% of all government health research funding. The NIA budget is less than 0.1% of U.S. healthcare spending. It is undeniable that aging research is hugely underfunded. Private investment and citizen contribution are two strategic ways we can work to improve these financial accessibility hurdles. Attracting private investment for aging research, longevity, biotech, and rejuvenation science has also been a historical challenge. This is interesting here. Listen, so this is due to misaligned investment ROI ethos. Because by nature, investors are incentivized to seek quick time horizons. All research has long time horizons, but none such greater than longevity, where you might have to wait 50 years to see proper results and or revenue. So for investors that are curious or already aligned with longevity as a mission, Lifespan has had its long-standing longevity investor network where we connect early stage science and tech startups, as well as relevant media project entrepreneurs with angel investors and institutional funds. No cost to anybody at the moment. Five more minutes. Crowdfunding. Five minutes. Five more minutes? Okay. So crowdfunding is the practice of funding a project or venture via crowdsourced financial contributions. This tactic has been used to advance scientific progress for hundreds of years with frequency and scale of their use rapidly increasing during the 21st century, thanks to the advent of the internet and mainstream adoption of related connected technologies. So it democratizes and raises funds for research. It raises awareness and engages the broader public. It provides a visibility and has the potential to go viral. And we do this for many different organizations. This is one example that we have. We have an internal research project called Mindset Project. It is a non-pharmacological remediation device for Alzheimer's that can be the first truly decentralized clinical trial. It is a device that uses light and sound, and it bypasses the slow and costly clinical trial fee and timing associated with drug-based models. Another crowdfunding example that we've helped with is Pearl, uh, and we did this uh, with Ageless Rx, it brought in over $180,000. We also work with David Sinclair, who's on our scientific advisory board on the NMN MICE research study. We hit, surpassed our fundraising goal by an additional 150%.
We also do fiscal sponsorships with an organization like the Alliance for Longevity Initiatives. And we have online educational resources and help these organizations legally uh, lobby politicians, which we as a 501c3 cannot do. And this is one of the greatest ways to help get government funding and handle the challenge, which is through lobbying and political advocacy. We also work with Dr. Brad Stanfield and Rapamycin. And again, art can help change the way society views longevity research. So we help with entrepreneurs who are working on media-based projects. So this cycle again, one thing is to enable funding, to introduce entrepreneurs to investors to crowdfund, but it's another thing to do it effectively. And it's not easy without the power to amplify. Nothing that I discussed today can be successful without proper access to large audiences. So I want to talk a little bit more about amplification before I finish. There are a lot of biases and misconceptions. And the longevity community as a whole is experiencing serious symptoms of a paradigm shift. And the only way to overcome this and accelerate the rate of progress is to get mainstream attention and influence, which is currently being uh, bombarded with strong biases and misconceptions that I'm sure many people have been dealing with. And then some of them are what you're seeing here. What about immortal dictators? It'll only be for the rich. We have an idea in our minds of how things are and how it affects what we do, and especially from people outside the, the field, how they see things. And once upon a time, humans thought that smallpox was due to the wrath of God, and it was impossible to overcome. Excuse me. But what the general public believes before we had antibiotics or statins clearly changed once the science actually came to fruition. So we need to think about how we would respond to these listed concerns. How confident are you in your ability to persuade someone that you're actually on the same page? And so we need to be able to actually respond effectively, and Lifespan.io provides resources for these types of things. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. We have lots of different YouTube channels that have millions of subscribers, and we provide content that actually targets different demographics with different levels of scientific understanding and creates this educational funnel to get them into longevity. We did this YouTube channel um, uh, collaboration that had over... 20 million subscribers alongside uh, the, the partner. And actually this video that went out um, incentivized and, and inspired multiple angel investors to get to the space and provide seed fundraising. And I'm almost done, I have one more slide. But if you haven't read this book, I sincerely recommend you look into it. It's about the history of cancer and the massive role that these individuals on the right played in revolutionizing not just how cancer was treated, but how the public perceived it. These heroic individuals transformed the national dialogue around cancer with various PR strategies and turned it from a pariah disease, excuse me, from a pariah disease into a global war that people wanted to be a part of. It was all about storytelling and narratives and providing more visibility and making sure they understood the audience and made sure that they did things to make sure they were also receptive. And so there's engagement and media strategy here that we all need to work on to increase the um, and accelerate the progress that our entire field is going through right now during this paradigm shift. So history has demonstrated that when you have a powerful social media movement that engages the mainstream, it's like adding jet fuel to the rate of acceleration and progress. And we are trying to make longevity now a global priority as well. So. Just to wrap up, good content strategy and audience awareness will help us meet people where they are and guide them towards a greater understanding and appreciation for the longevity movement. Uh, movement. The next step is just to activate them. And if the pandemic has shown us anything, it's the importance of clear communication between science and the public, how the public understands, how much they understand, what audience is being targeted, and their respective narrative being leveraged. There are massive benefits to having a public that is excited and on board with the idea of longevity research and what you're working on. So let's make science more human together. We're at an inflection point. Many changes are on the horizon. We have so many things going on. I can't even start to tell you, but I look forward to it. And uh, we have a conference coming up in August in New York City in person, the 10th and 11th. So stand by for more information about that. And uh, at the end of the day, our goal is longer, healthier lives with the people we love. And we are here to try and achieve making this longevity movement mainstream together. 
And I want to thank you again to Dalaba for having us, having Lifespan.io uh, among this illustrious crowd. We have a lot of work to do, but this is the most amazing cause we could ever be a part of. So thank you again. Stephanie, uh, we are over time, but let's take a quick question. Quick question. Quick. quick. I can repeat. Okay. Uh, I, I love your messaging and content, Stephanie. Uh, but how do you choose which narratives to amplify? For example, uh, how do you choose to work with David Sinclair, for example? Or, you know, because there is so much work going on. What's your process of selection? Uh, what is your it's actually... Yeah. Okay, you heard it. Good. Yes, it did. It's actually, it, the science doesn't equate to the narrative, right? If the science is good, the science makes sense, and it goes through our vetting process, then the narrative that's created is chosen through a series of A-B testing, through a series of historic reference on what has worked best, which platform we're using, which demographic of audience, how much each of those demographics knows. So if we're turning it into an animated piece for people who don't understand science at all, it's translated in a certain way with our script writers. If it's going out towards the longevity community that already understands the science, it's not translated as much. So I, I would just frame the question uh, slightly differently. And the narrative that is chosen has nothing to do on if the science is good or not. It depends on who it's being presented to. Uh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie.